What's going on guys? Welcome to another beautiful Sunday afternoon here in Hawaii. Just wanted to say a special thank you and uh, happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Took a few minutes out of the day here of pampering my own wife today to come and record this video. Got kind of a bunch of knives I want to try and make it through so I'm going to go through them kind of quick but I did have a few I wanted to show you so let's get started here. The first one, this was uh, sort of a disappointment, actually. So, I got this one a while ago. This is the Kershaw Scrambler, which I was very happy with. I've carried this quite a few times and actually really like this one quite a bit. This is an R.J. Martin design. So, I decided to get the other one that I had been looking at, which is the Kershaw Vault. And, unfortunately, this one is not a winner for me. There is just so much about this knife that I don't care for. It was kind of a bummer considering how much I like the other one. Uh, they are pretty close size-wise. You can see the Volt is a bit thinner, but it's just got a lot of stuff about it that uh, really not nearly as nice as the Scrambler. First off, the frame lock itself. This thing has a nice sharp edge right there for you to catch your thumb on. It has some terrible lock stick to it. The action on it is, I mean, you can't really find a good spot to where it doesn't have any play and it still opens nicely. It's just not nearly as well made not comfortable in your hand. This jimping up here at the top is way too sharp. I mean, I was glad I only paid 25 bucks for this one. How about that? It's not a winner for me. Not nearly as nice as this one. So, again, Kershaw Volt versus the Scrambler. If you happen to be in a position where you're deciding between these two, I absolutely recommend the Scrambler personally. But that's that. So moving on, the next one I wanted to show you is this. And I got this in a box that somebody sent to me that I bought another knife from him, which I'll get to in a little bit here later in this video, but he included this one in the package. Um, this was kind of an extra that he just threw in. I was not expecting it. And this is, in fact, my first Rough Rider knife. So. This is the Pipe Doctor, and again, having no other reference for Rough Rider knives this is the first one I've ever had. First impressions of it, it's pretty nice actually. Now, I don't know what these actually cost, but it did come very sharp. I mean, this is shaving sharp, like it says on the blade. It says, Focus here. Razor sharp steel, 440, made in China. You know, I'm not much into traditional knives, but this one seems to work really well. It opens and closes nice and easy. Has this long sheep's foot main blade, and then your pipe poker, I guess. And then I would imagine the end of this is meant to also be used as a pipe tamper for packing your tobacco down into your pipe, I guess. Kind of looks like it would be used for that, but anyway, I thought this was a really nice free item to receive. I thought it was cool, so thank you for that, and I will get to a little bit later in the video where this came from. I'm actually going to include his information because he has a lot of really cool knives for sale right now, so I'll talk about that in a minute, but anyway, this was the Rough Rider Pipe Doctor So there we go. Next one I wanted to talk about. I have gotten some new Tucson knives. Now, these ones did not come straight from China. These came from another friend of mine who was selling a couple of his. And that's, I mean, probably going to be your easiest way to get Tucson stuff right now is buying it from someone in the United States because shipping out of China has been all messed up right now so he had these available and this is one that I had a long time ago actually when I first started getting Tucson knives I did have uh, two of these and 
you know, for whatever reason, somebody wanted to buy them from me, ended up letting them go, and that's right when they decided to stop making it. I believe this is the TS-91. You can see this is a skeletonized Tanto blade made from D2 steel. No designer information on this one. I'm not sure if this is back when they were just putting them out without a designer. I don't have a whole lot of information on this guy because it is one of their older models, but they did have a couple different variations on this. This one has this nice belt loop that came with it. Some of the other ones had a tech lock clip that came on it. I actually kind of prefer this one. Um, he had both of them, and I, I opted for this because I do have another tech lock clip that I could throw on here, but... They also have a blacked out version of this guy. So anyway, this is one that I kind of regretted letting go a while, while back. So I decided to pick this one up from him. The Kydex sheath on this guy is really nice. It's very thin, so it sits nice and flat to your body, especially without a handle on it. The retention on this guy is really well. So I like this one a lot, actually. It's, it's just kind of a nice piece of D2 steel. So anyway decided to get another one of these and then he also included this one now I don't know what the number is on this guy I had this one a long time ago also and at the time I wasn't really into small knives so I let this one go to someone else this is the Tucson lava now again I don't know what the number is on it but I do remember that they called this the lava with this nice hammered design to it. It does look like a piece of lava rock. Again, this is D2 steel with their black wash on it. And this one was designed just to be a neck knife. This does not have any kind of a clip on it, although the hole spacing, you could throw something on here if you want to put this on your belt. Um, I do like that on their Kydex, they put this little drain hole at the bottom just so moisture can drain out. But neat little knife. Uh, again, it's a little small for my own personal tastes but I do like it a lot it's a thick piece of steel this is like five millimeter thick nice sturdy little fixed blade knife so he included this as part of our trade so thank you for that man I do really appreciate it nice to get another one of these back again there are definitely some along the way that I regret letting go of and didn't think I would at the time but looking back I'm like oh, I wish I still had that one and this was one of those so thank you for that I appreciate it. So those are two of the new two suns that I've gotten. And let me show you a few of the other ones because some pretty cool scores in the last couple days. Now this guy here, while it came in this nice custom knife factory pouch, that's not what it is. This was a two sun knife. And I saw this one listed on one of the knife sale groups on Facebook and the listing was about a week old when I saw it, and I couldn't believe what I was seeing when I when I came across the listing and immediately messaged him and said, hey, is that thing still available? And he said yes. So I very quickly sent him some money for it, and it came in the mail. And this is an orca spotted in the wild. So... I know it's kind of a rarity these days to come across one, and uh, yeah, was very happy that it was still available. Now he has done some custom work to this. It is factory sharp. It does look like he mirror polished the blade a little bit, so that was cool. Did some anno work on it with the gold on the pivot collar, and then this flame anno on the handle with some spotting designs to make it look more Orca, which I thought was kind of cool, and then he did also do some custom work on the backspacer here. So I thought that was a very cool score to come across this guy for sale. So again, they are out there. If you happen to come across one, I would say scoop it up. It's definitely one of those knives that was underrated when it was around originally and uh, yeah definitely worth having if you can find one so this is the TS 84 Orca 
And the next ones I wanted to talk about here, this is my small collection of TS-72s. Now there has been some uh, resurgence of interest in this knife. They have started releasing these again on eBay, which I was very happy to see. Obviously this has always been my number one favorite. No surprise if you've watched any of my other videos. I love this knife. It's just a fantastic design. It's like it was made for my hand. So this is my carry one that I do carry and use on a regular basis. And then some of the other ones that I have here, I'll show you my small collection here. This is one that I picked up a while ago on eBay that came from a guy named Dan Jacobs on eBay and he did the anno work on this guy. This is not my handy work, but this is one of the ones that I have. So it's got the nice fade going on and then gold accents. So that's one. I have this guy here, which is the purple version that he also did. I have this one here, which is my original. Now, I had this one in my pocket for like a year and a half, and I used this one until it was dead. You can see the difference in the blade. I used and ground this one down to nothing. It was uh, kind of a sad story how this all worked out. I ended up chipping the blade really bad and had to grind a lot of it back to, to get that out of there. And I still kept using it after that. Um, I did do the anno on this one myself, the kind of bronze and the blue. This was actually the first knife that I ever anodized myself and kind of has that worn bronze look to it. So I was happy with the way the anno came out, but unfortunately, after using this one for so long, it has developed a little bit of lock rock. So when this one opens, it has just a little bit of play in it there. And you can see it's been open and closed so many times that it travels to like 75% and does not stay all the way over anymore. I could probably bend this bar farther over and it would stop the lock rock, but I, I just retired it. So this was this one. And the other day, I was talking to somebody on Facebook about it, and he said, hey, yeah, I have one available for sale. I said, sure, I'm, I'm game. What do you got? I'm definitely interested. And this is the one that he just sent me the other day. Brand new blade. And you can see the anno work on his. Funny enough, kind of matches my original. I thought that was very interesting. He was telling me that it was anodized, and I said, yeah, no, I don't mind that at all. So send it. And it just, I thought it was interesting how close it actually is to my original one here. So I thought this was a fantastic score. Now, the story behind these, real quick, they are, again, for sale on eBay. Now, the first couple that they put out, went into like the $150, $180 range. They put out, I think, one or two of the ones with this uh, square milling pattern on it. And then they started releasing a few of the other version that has the circular pattern and the really bad clip on it. I think they put out maybe three or four of those for auction. And then they started doing this one again. And the last two of these that sold on eBay, I think went for like, 180 and then the last one just sold for $288 which absolutely blew my mind but again <laughs> you know I don't even think that that's out of hand for this knife it's really really good and I maybe not 288 but it's certainly worth a lot more than they ever were getting for these now funny enough I have contacted Tucson quite a few times in the last year and a half asking them if they would bring this one back and they kept telling me no no and then a few months ago I messaged them about it and they said oh we'll let you know if we're gonna do it again so that was a little glimmer of hope and then when they started releasing it again I wrote to them just to say thanks for bringing it back and 
talking back and forth with him, I asked if there was any way that they would make a blade for mine out of M390 steel. And at first he said no. But after they started releasing it again, I just messaged them and he said, Sir, we will be releasing the TS-72 in M390 steel. When you see it for sale on our shop, please contact me for a blade. So, awesome. That's my big news. I am very, very happy to hear that they finally listened to my suggestions about putting this one out in M390. I think they probably were surprised to see one sell for $288. And, yeah, I don't know what goes on over there at their factory and what drives their decisions, but the fact that they decided to make this one finally in M390 is awesome. So... I'm trying to be patient. Again, it's not easy to get stuff out of China right now. I have had to uh, reroute a lot of my purchases to a friend in California so he can then mail them to me because their courier is not shipping to Hawaii right now. But I will figure out a way to get a blade for this one here in M390. He said he would send me one, so that's awesome. But stay tuned for you guys that are trying to get your hands on one of these. I'm not trying to make anybody jealous here obviously this is my number one favorite which is why i have a few of them but uh, it does look like they are going to be continuing to put this one out so that's awesome and putting one out in m390 even better so very cool the ts72 and then i have one more knife i want to show you here let me clear these out the last knife that i wanted to show you guys today doesn't actually belong to me and up until about an hour ago, I really didn't know anything about this knife, but this is the Cold Steel Kudu, and I believe this one is a South African design, and this is a ratchet lock knife. So, very interesting little blade, and I'm going to do something at the end of this video that's going to make you cringe, and I will explain why. But... Again, it's a ratchet lock, so the back here, this is a big spring on the outside of the knife, and as you open it up, there's little ratchet points here that you will hear click through, and it locks in place. The size on this one, this guy is just about 10 inches overall. cutting edge, a little over four inches, and then the handle on is is pretty good size, actually. The handle is like almost five and three quarter. So it weighs next to nothing. Very lightweight knife. This guy is uh, 2.74 ounces. So very lightweight, considering the size specs on this guy. This is 5CR15 MOV steel made in China. And then the way you close this knife, like I said, it's a ratchet lock, but kind of get a good grip on it here. Put your finger through it to pull back and disengage. And that unlocks it here. And then you just close it one click. And once you get it past that first stop, you can click through the ratchet points. Now, I guess the original design of these, not the cold steel version, but the originals were not very well made, um, supposedly not very sharp from what I understand. This one actually belongs to a friend of mine. Um, he is the, uh, the owner of JKD International, and this knife he intends to use for fight training. So, again, I don't know a whole lot about um, the actual fighting style with this, but I will link some information to his school in the description for this video. Um, his name is Burton Richardson, and really awesome guy. He asked me to do something to this knife that is going to make a few people cringe, but I told him, sure, I can, I can definitely help you out with that. So, this is a 240 grit diamond stone, and... Right now, this knife is already 
very, very sharp. I mean, it's got really thin blade stock on it. It comes down to a really nice thin edge here. So it doesn't need to be sharpened at all, but quite the opposite, actually. He asked if I could do this. Yes, he did in fact ask if I could remove the edge from this so this can be used as a training knife. I know that's not normally something you would do and it even makes me cringe a little bit to, uh, to do this to a perfectly sharp blade. And I will say, even running it on the diamond after that, <laughs> I would still consider this to be sharp enough to cut something with, so not too bad, but anyway. I'm going to finish this off on the bench grinder and really just flatten this out completely and round the tip over for him so he can use it for training. But anyway, the Cold Steel Kudu, this one I think runs about 8 or 10 bucks, so it's not an expensive knife, but he did want to use this in, uh, in one of his classes, so we will make it safe to do so. But that's the last one I got for you guys today. So... That being said, I'm out of daylight, but thank you guys for watching. Happy Mother's Day again out there to all the moms, and I uh, hope to see you guys at the next video. Thanks.